Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Tarot by Melissa and today's reading we're going to be getting into what is next in love for singles. So what we'll be looking into today are the next energies, events, situations, and or lessons of significance that you guys, my singles, will be experiencing in love coming into the near future. So let's hop into some disclaimers. First and foremost, this is a general reading, so some of the messages may not specifically apply to you in your situation, whereas some might apply to you in your situation. So always use your intuition to discern what's really a message meant for you, what might be a message for someone else as a best practice. If something is not resonating, if something doesn't feel like it fits for you, then it's probably not your message. Just release it and let it go, and certainly do not allow it to get you upset if it's not specifically resonant to your situation. If you guys did want to book a personal reading, all the details on how you could do that with me will be linked in the description box down below. Personal readings are a great way to get a more specific and accurate read on your own personal energy. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and get into our pile selection. We're working with three piles today, and instead of doing a pick a crystal, we're doing a pick a color. So for pile number one, we have this green color called chalkboard. For pile number two, we have gold, abundance. And for pile number three, we have lilac, belief, and faith. So I want you guys to take a deep breath. Think about what's ahead for you in love. Go ahead and select the color that you're feeling the most intuitively connected to, really focusing on where your intuition is guiding you versus the words on the card. And once you've made your choice, you can scroll down to the description box to locate the timestamp that will skip you ahead to your selected pile. See you there. Hey, pile one, and welcome to your reading. If you guys selected this chalkboard color, this is going to be your reading. We're looking at what's next in love for singles. So we're gonna start with these pre-shuffled cards because this is gonna kind of give us the overall energy or theme that you guys are working with. We're also gonna be kind of starting off the reading here with some advice as well, just something to kind of keep in mind and consider as we look at the energies as they're playing out for you. So we have chalkboard. We have enamored love potion and we have expectations. When you expect too much, no one measures up. Ditch your list. Want what's real. Okay. So I do feel for this group overall, what I feel is um, you guys are moving into a period of getting really, really clear about what it is that you want in love. Uh, for my singles for pile one, I feel like this is a time where you might be looking at your list, right? You might be looking at your list, developing some sort of guidelines for yourself around what is the ideal partner for you? Who are they? What are their characteristics? Um, and really like thinking about how you can maybe be more in control of almost like weeding out the types of people who are not aligned with what your vision is. With the chalkboard being here, this says develop your destiny. So when I think of a chalkboard, I think of like writing something down, right? You're learning something maybe, or um, essentially this is like a time where you are empowered and in control of your love life, right? You're the one setting the tone. You're the one um, deciding what direction you're going to go in with regard to your standards. And I do feel with the chalkboard being here, one thing that I'm getting with this is that when we write on a chalkboard, it, it, it is erasable, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be permanent or set in stone, which is what kind of brings me back to the advice given on this card where it says, when you expect too much, no one measures up, ditch your list, want what's real. So I feel like you guys might actually be moving into a period of revising your expectations, managing your expectations, um, making sure that your expectations are realistic and that they're expectations that actually exist in another human being and erasing the things that maybe aren't, you've determined are not realistic or that are too much or too extra, okay? 
We also have the Love Potion Enamored. So I do feel for some of you guys, there is a lot of bottled up emotion that you might be holding. And as I'm kind of tapping into this card, I'm feeling some butterflies in the pit of my stomach. So I'm definitely excited to look at your tarot cards and see like what this could be talking about. Uh, but I do feel like there is some sort of situation or person of significance that you guys might be really thinking about when you're thinking about this revision here. So I don't know if this group is like, kind of talking to someone right now as you're viewing the reading and this person, maybe they feel really amazing to you and that's kind of pushing you to kind of revise or rethink your expectations that you've set. Um, or if this is just, I feel like for some of you, this is actually a situation where you might be getting butterflies for someone, you might be really enamored with someone um, and it's kind of a challenge to stick to your list. So a couple of different scenarios that I feel. Let's continue with some tarot cards next. So we're working with the Twin Flame Journey Tarot. So let's see for pile one. Tell me what is next in love for pile one. Also, if you guys feel compelled, please comment below if you like this recording space better or my traditional wooden table. <laughs> um, I am recording in my office space slash beauty room today. It is getting dark outside, so the natural lighting isn't that great, but I'm just cur always curious to know what you guys find most aesthetically pleasing. All right, so what is next in love for pile one, for my singles for pile one? So we have hermit energy, the two of swords, four of pentacles, seven of swords. And we have the chariot. So I definitely can see that there is this energy of focus, right? Like the chariot is about being very driven and focused on your end goal, okay? Chariot is about victory. It's about success. It is about kind of having blinders on as well, you guys. So I do kind of feel with some of the other cards that I'm seeing here, I'm wondering if some of you guys may have blinders on when it comes to certain situations because they don't look the way you want them to look. And this is where this expectations advice is coming in, where it's like you could be missing out on opportunities if you don't sort of like take the blinders off and sort of release this idea in your head of what you feel success in a partner is going to look like, okay? Um, so I feel that you guys coming into this reading are in a space of maybe being single, obviously it's a singles reading, but being single and sort of isolating, detaching a little bit from your love life. And I love that this card specifically talks about soul searching because I do feel that is a lot of what you guys are doing with this chalkboard energy. It's like really soul searching and, you know, trying to get more clarity on what direction you wanna go in love, get more clear about what it is that you're ultimately looking for and what you consider to be your, you know, end goal that you want in a partner. Now, I do feel that there's an energy here as well that maybe you have pulled yourself away from a situation because you're at a place of not being ready to make a choice about what direction that you may wanna go. And this is kind of drawing me back into this love potion energy where I do feel for some of you guys that there's a situation here that gives you butterflies, but I'm not entirely certain that it is a situation that may be aligned with your expectations just yet. And so there is this energy of pulling away from that, maybe pulling away from the energy of butterflies, <laughs> right? So that you can kind of detach and think a bit more clearly about what's really right for you. Um, I feel with this four of pentacles here, there is a need to sort of open up your heart a little bit to other possibilities, whether it be with this particular person that you guys may be dealing with, if it is a specific person or just love in general, uh, because the scarcity mindset is like when we think that we only have this one option or this one person and we don't realize that if we just let go of that scarcity mindset, there's actually love all around you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just this one love potion that you could be drinking, <laughs> you know? Um, and many times with this scarcity mindset of the four of pentacles, we are sort of um, energetically clinging on to something that may be lasting past its expiration date, okay? This is kind of like jealousy energy sometimes. This is possessive energy at times. If that doesn't resonate with you guys, then this is just talking about, you know, closed off energy, 
um, and just having this mentality that there aren't the types of people out there that you guys want to connect with, okay? Um, so I definitely see a period of you guys kind of isolating and sort of d disconnecting from love and relationships so that you can try to get a better understanding of which direction that you want to go. Um, I just, I don't know, like for some of you with this Four of Pentacles, I feel like there is a situation that you maybe have invested yourselves in here. Um, that's just kind of like a barren situation. Like I'm looking at this tree and it's like submerged in the water and it's just kind of skimpy, you know? Um, it's just kind of skimpy. I don't know how else to put it. Like this tree is not necessarily bearing fruit, yet we're clinging on to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even with the Seven of Swords being here, this is also an energy of sort of moving in silence, isolation, not really being forthcoming about your choices and decisions and where you're wanting to go or move with regard to the situation. Um. It's like very bottled up emotions that I'm getting here with this. So let's continue. I want to pull a few more cards to get some like additional context for you. So what else can we learn about what's next in love for pile number one, please? What else? We have Beauty Queen. Sorry, guys. We have short term. That's how the love potion felt to me, like very rush of energy, like whirlwind romance energy. We also have the intense, or I'm sorry, the brunette female coming up. OK. I'm going to get a few more to close this out in a minute, but I feel like for this group, Like, uh, I'm not really seeing a lot of energy of you guys being like in this card in the spotlight or really open to putting yourselves out there like that. But I feel like this, this card is really coming up to push you to do this, even if it's a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Like, I just keep like getting the sense that this pile has been really or is currently just as you're coming to this reading in a place of disconnection from their love life or isolation from their love life, really drawing back from situations and potentially holding on to a short-term connection that is not necessarily bringing you the results with the chariot card that you are ultimately wanting and wishing for in love. But there's this energy with this four of pentacles, two of swords of like just being blind to the reality of the situation or being too afraid to make a choice necessarily maybe not being blind to what's going on because I feel like you guys intuitively know that maybe this is a short-term fling that's not ultimately right for you but there is this vibe of kind of clinging on to it energetically being afraid to let it go maybe you guys are planning kind of a sneaky escape from it with the seven of swords like seven of swords can be like ghosting energy as well but drawing back to this beauty queen I feel like this is a message for my pile one viewers that like you are like stunning like you are somebody who is you have glitter around you if you don't even realize it okay so <laughs> I feel like you need to get out there and go on dates and get out there and let your inner beauty shine and radiate to the world you have a lot to offer people I'm really guided to say that and I do think that you uh, you guys actually have a lot more admirers than you realize so if you've been in isolation for a while, if you've been clinging on to something that's not really bearing fruit, then it may be time to consider, you know, rewriting your destiny and revising things, um, creating something new and different for yourself. Now, I do feel with this brunette female, this so this brunette female could be a person of significance for some of you that fits this description. Um, this does talk about a person who has darker hair, but it also talks about traits of being intense or highly focused. And again, it's giving me this energy of you guys being really intently focused or clinging on to this short-term situation. I almost said situationship, so maybe that's the case for some of you. 
But also this is chariot energy of being like laser focused on something intently focused on something and maybe with the seven of swords some of you guys have been sort of intently focusing on the situation behind the scenes maybe you haven't really spoken about it out loud to anyone uh, but there's there's something in your energy that i feel needs to be released in terms of clinging on to something that has lasted beyond its expiration date okay because I feel with this beauty queen energy and the love potion that you all have a lot more power over your love life than you even realize. <laughs> um, to create, you know, whatever destiny you want for yourself. All right, so let's just pull a couple of these to close us out. So what else can we learn about pile one's love life? What's next in love for pile one? Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectation. Some of you guys, I think going back to this expectations energy, I feel like there's another scenario playing out here where like what, someone out there is maybe connecting with someone that's not their typical type and clinging on to like the old type or the old expectations here. Um, so I think that there is a need with this four of uh, pentacles to... Continue to be open to something new and different because you never know what can click if you just give it a try. Okay, let's see. Let's grab another one. We have very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Yeah, I mean, that kind of ties back in with the two of swords of being in stalemate energy, right? So there's a need here for you guys to get clear about what it is that you want, Really going back to the expectations and thinking about like what are your must-haves and what are your deal breakers and aligning yourself with those things. And one piece of advice that I heard, I think from one of my therapists in the past was like, when you're making your list about romantic partners, really streamline it to the five must-haves and the five deal breakers. So what are the five things that you ultimately have to have in a partner to, that you know will make you happy? Is it communication skills? Is it someone with a certain type of job? Like, And then what are the five things that you know you could never deal with? You know, like we all have different deal breakers out there. So keeping it kind of streamlined allows you to be open to new and different possibilities without like, sometimes when the lists are too long, it's like you're you're gonna be disqualifying everybody because you're kind of creating this person, this ideal person in your list that may not really exist. You know what I mean? Um, and sometimes we don't always know exactly what it is that we want until we try new and different types of connections. So very interesting energy pile one. I think I'm going to leave it here, but I would love to hear from you guys in the comments how your love life's been going recently. What themes from this reading do you feel resonate with your specific situation? Drop me a note below and let me know. If you're not already, please do subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you will be notified when I post the next reading and I'll see you then. Bye. Hey, pile two, if you guys picked out this gold color, this is going to be your love reading. So we're looking at what is next in love for singles. We're going to kick things off by looking at these pre-shuffled oracles to get kind of the overall energy of the themes you guys are moving through. And then we're going to move into tarot um, and some more oracle cards to get the details. So we have gold, which is talking about abundance. We do have love cords and we do have giving too much. You are depleted because you give too much. You need a balance of give and take. I also forgot to mention, we're kind of starting off with the advice in this reading so that we can kind of keep it in mind as we see how things are going to play out with the events. So, all right, pile two. I feel that you guys were drawn to this gold color because there's something here about your confidence and self-worth that's being activated in this next cycle of your love life. Um, I think that this card is really talking about the need to strive for balance in your relationships, striving for balance in effort, energy, and resources being shared. And I do feel like with this group, there is potentially a tendency to do too much or to overexert yourself in the effort department to overcompensate for others' deficiencies or to try to gain some sort of reassurance from someone else. Um, and so that's why I kind of feel you guys were drawn to this gold color because this has to do with 
themes of self-confidence, self-worth. And knowing your worth is being able to know that you are abundant as you are without having to deplete yourself. You know what I mean? You should never have to deplete yourself in order to get someone's attention or to get someone to like notice you or reciprocate love to you, okay? You are abundant as you are. And I feel like this is what you guys are kind of working on during this next phase is becoming more whole and confident with self so that you can really lay down those proper boundaries and feel really good about like not overdoing it, you know? If someone's not texting you back, for instance, instead of feeling anxious and needing to reach out to them, you just don't care, you know? Like you guys kind of get yourself into that space. So I feel like that's the major theme you guys are moving through. And I do feel with the love cords here that this group is still showing some sort of energetic attachment to a specific person. So we're going to kind of see with the tarot cards how this is going to play out. But there's definitely an energetic, like spiritual connection with someone who is pulling at your solar plexus. This is a person that is... Um, depleting you energetically. They're they're triggering or depleting you of your confidence, your self-worth, things like that. Um, so let's take a look here. Let's get into the tarot. We are working with the Twin Flame Journey Tarot today. So let's just kind of see what comes through for you. next in love for pile two please what's next in love for pile two we have the star the queen of wands the strength card the six of cups and we do have a King of Swords here at the bottom of the deck. So this is air energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be an air sign, but just the qualities and characteristics of an air sign. This is the type of person that might have a quick wit and be very intellectual. This is the type of person that's going to be more about their thoughts and verbal expression versus being connected to their heart space. This is a person who can be very moral, like they may have very strict morals and values that they abide by. Um, they may be somebody who is um, picky sometimes or critical of partners. There's a lot of pros and cons to every court card, you know what I mean? But there is an undertone of this energy here. So whether this being a specific person for some of you or your own energy, just know that it's here under the deck. I definitely see though that this is going to be a time of boosting confidence for you. <laughs> so starting things off with the star here. This is showing me that you guys are coming to this reading in a period of healing, a period of feeling really hopeful about your love life, um, inspired. I'm also feeling there is this energy of hope that you will align either with a specific person that you're still feeling connected to or align with the right person at the right time when the moment is right for you. Um, it's it's beautiful energy. It's hopeful. It's inspiration. It's kind of like, you know, the dreams of what could be, if that makes sense. And I think while there is this energy of dreaming of what could be, again, you guys are working on your confidence here with the Queen of Wands. Confident and magnetic. The Queen of Wands is the energy of really being in your power, knowing your worth, not being afraid to set boundaries, not being afraid to be a little sassy with someone if you need to be. Um, so I definitely think that this group is working on confidence, feeling more confident during this time, and working on that magnetic attraction because the queen of wands is magnetic. This is like hot girl energy, hot guy energy, right? Like this is the, the queen that all of the people want to be around because they find her so attractive and vivacious and people are just naturally drawn to her energy because of her flame, right? She shines really brightly. And so I think a lot of you guys have gone through or will be going through a period of healing that's allowing you to show up in this way and really attract a lot of energy to you versus being a person that feels unworthy and having to like give, give, give to others. It's like, no, now we're realizing our worth and we are showing up in a place where we can receive and know that we're going to attract what's meant for us. And if it's not meant for us, we're just going to be like, whatever, bye. I don't care. <laughs> so 
Moving into the strength card here, it's really interesting because the juxtaposition here with the Queen of Wands is that even though she does attract people, I do feel the Queen of Wands is an energy of action as well. So I do think for this group, because maybe you do resonate with certain traits of being proactive, um, I feel like for my pile twos, maybe you're, you're more like hardworking or business savvy in certain ways. Like you're used to being in an energy where you're a go-getter, you're multitasking, you're doing a lot of things. And so I think like when people that you date or a person that you guys might be connecting with are not necessarily like showing up in the way that they should be, it's like you just kind of naturally spring into that leadership mode, right? Which is ultimately depleting you because it's throwing things off balance. So what I feel is happening with the strength card is you guys are learning to kind of tame yourself a little bit, kind of Tame yourself from that impulsive reach out. Hold yourself back from like needing to be the one to drive the situation. You're learning to hold back and kind of observe and see what somebody else is going to do if you don't do anything, right? And that's a really empowering place to be in because it allows you to really see clearly who someone is and how they're really prioritizing you in their life. If you're always in action mode and putting in all the effort, then you're never going to actually be able to lean back and see what other people are capable of. Like, I know I do this sometimes where if I feel like I'm always the person that's reaching out, whether it's a friend or, I don't know, a romantic partner, whoever, sometimes I'll just lean back. Like, if I've been the one that's been reaching out, you know, more often in recent months, I just kind of like lean back and see, like, are they going to reach out to me at some point? <laughs> Is this a reciprocated friendship, right? There's nothing wrong with doing that from time to time. If you're, if you're feeling depleted, I'll say definitely not about like advocating for playing games or anything like that. But the goal here is to strive for balance, right? So you want to strive for putting in your effort, but then making sure you're holding back enough to where you're noticing the other efforts that pe other people are putting into your relationship. Okay. I do see here with the Six of Cups, there is a past person here, okay? This is talking about memories and reunion. So again, I was picking up on there's a love cord here. You guys are still energetically attached to someone. I do feel there could be reconciliation with a person from your past, maybe somebody you knew when you were younger, someone you knew from childhood, um, or it could just be a person that you feel is very familiar to you, even though you've never met them before. But the, for the majority of this group, I do feel that this is... Um, an indication of a past person coming into your life um, for reconciliation. And as I'm parting the deck, look, we have the work card coming up. So I, I definitely feel like for pile two, you guys are like very uh, career oriented, used to being the leader in other areas of your life. And so that could be why it's, it's a struggle sometimes if you struggle with dating because you guys are just like the natural born leader, <laughs> you know? So let's see, what else is coming up in love for pile two? We have family, origin, soul family, and groups. So some of you guys could be focusing on like um, your social life during this time as well. And that's also helping to build your confidence you know, hanging out with soul family, going out in groups of people, even just connecting with your family of origin, things like that. I think there's also always something to explore um, around like our family roots, right? And how we were raised and how the dynamics of our parents um, and the environment we were raised in kind of contributed to how we show up in relationships. So for some of you, there could be some healing around this or learning or exploring that a little bit more. Let's see. We have the young male, sporty cars and youthful. So there's, it could be a younger masculine of significance that this group is dealing with. It doesn't have to be a masculine, just someone that's maybe more in a youthful energy in general. Um, but this looks like a person who could potentially be into sports, cars, <laughs> or just someone that has like more of a, an active energy to them. And, you know, if they are a little bit younger or less mature than you, uh, they may, I don't want to say generalize for everyone, but there could be this energy of them not being on your level yet. And this could be why you guys are feeling ex over, like you're overly giving to the situation potentially. Let's see. Because maybe they're just not that experienced. They don't know yet how to properly show up in a relationship with someone like you. 
Okay, we have destiny, luck, chance, and meant to be. Wow. I just kind of feel like this reconciliation energy is going to happen when it's supposed to happen. We do have friendship at the bottom. So yeah, I definitely feel either this person you guys are thinking about is a friend or someone that's already in your your group, like your group of acquaintances or someone you know through a group. Because groups are coming up a couple of times here. Um, but I also think this is sim symbolic of you guys going out and being social and hanging out with your friends too. But I feel like this re reunion, this reconciliation energy with the Six of Cups is going to happen by chance. Like, I just feel like the universe is going to kind of throw you guys together when you least expect it. So I think it's going to be really good for you to practice the skill of restraint and kind of holding back and just kind of seeing what <laughs> plays out instead of trying to orchestrate it yourself because I feel like it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen for both parties here. Okay, so let's close it out, pile two, with just a couple of these romance angel cards. So what else uh, does pile two need to know about their love life for my singles for pile two? We have chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. And I just got really excited when I pulled that card. So I definitely think that with chemistry, all the more reason to practice restraint because, you know, like chemistry is great. Attraction is great. But I do feel with this group, there's a need to be a little bit more intentional about how you're expending your energy with this person, this young male, because I feel like this is probably someone that's really exciting for you. Um, so it doesn't mean hold yourself back or don't be yourself, but I think it's just saying take it slow and try to hold yourself back from getting too physical with someone too quickly because you want to be able to like assess the situation from a really grounded perspective, you know, to ensure longevity, we'll say. <laughs> All right, let's grab one more of these. We also have forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Yeah. There, I do still feel like there is some healing to do around like a specific person or situation from the past that you guys are moving through. And it seems like you're kind of realizing this at the beginning of the reading here. Like maybe as you guys are coming into the reading, there's that realization that there's something to learn from your past experiences, from your family, your parents, things of that nature. Um, and I think releasing and working through those things are just going to free you up to really experience a renewed scent, uh, renewed energy in your love life. We also do have worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. So I'm seeing this a couple times here with like strength, the destiny card. It's like there's definitely this undertone of you guys kind of coming into this next cycle with the energy of trying to lean back a little bit more, to restrain a little bit more from just leaping into things that you feel excited about. Not saying you don't engage in them, but you take your time and sort of allow things to work out as they will instead of maybe having to be the driver or the leader in the situation. So pile two, what a really interesting and exciting reading. I really look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. Um, tell me which aspects you feel resonate the most with your situation and kind of how your love life has been going lately. Um, if you're not already, definitely subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post the next reading and I'll see you then. Bye. Hey, pile three. If you guys picked out this lilac color, this is going to be your love reading. So we're looking at what is next in love for singles. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to pull your overall energies that you're working with during this next cycle in your love life. We're going to kind of start off with the advice just so we can kind of keep it in mind as we move into the rest of your reading. So you guys did pick Lilac, which says belief and faith. We do have party of one and we have too much. You tell others too much about yourself all at once. Sit back and listen more. Okay. So right off the jump, don't click off the video, pile three, because I feel like some of some of you are going to see these three cards and be like, bye, I'm out. I don't receive this, which I understand if you do. But um, what I feel is next for you all in love is perhaps a little bit of time. I feel like getting to know yourself in a sense, because this card is giving me the energy of someone who's taking themselves out on dates. Okay. 
this definitely kind of confirms that you all are coming into this reading with the energy of being single. Um, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be a person that shows up here as we get more into the reading, but there seems to be an emphasis that spirit is placing on the party of one or this, this card wouldn't have come out if it wasn't important. So there's, there's this vibe of really needing to get to know yourself. And with Lilac being here with belief and faith, the purple energy is giving me like, you know, Lilac to me is like a very calming, very peaceful sort of vibe to it. Um, and so I feel like this is a period of time where you're focusing on sort of building your trust with yourself and building your trust with the universe to know that the right person, having faith that the right person is going to come your way when they're supposed to. And I, I feel with this card coming up here, as you guys are going on dates, there's something here for you to reflect on around the way you're communicating on your dates or with romantic partners. Um, there's actually a lot of power in being the listener in a conversation because it allows you, when you just kind of sit back and let someone talk, you learn a lot about them, okay? Um, <laughs> and there's also something too about like protecting yourself through not oversharing, right? Like there are certain things that like when you overshare, it can be kind of off-putting to people if they're new to us in our lives. Um, there are certain things also that just for boundaries sake, you don't necessarily need to tell someone right away, you know? Um, even just in general, I feel like this is a message not to feel like you guys have to share everything right away. I feel for some of you guys, there could be certain topics that you don't feel comfortable sharing yet when you first meet someone. And I want to reassure you that that's totally okay. You know, maybe you take the advice in this card and you lean back and just like listen kind of try to understand how someone thinks and feels, what their values and morals are, things like that. And then you kind of will learn whether or not this is a person that you can reveal more to, you know? So let's, I want to continue here with some tarot. So what is next in love for pile three? For some of you, I feel like the it could be conversations about spirituality for some reason, just because of like the belief in faith. Like there could be something about spirituality or just belief systems in general um, that maybe there's a fear of revealing everything right away or a need to not feel like you need to reveal these things right away. So let's see. What's next in love for Pal 3? Knight of Swords. Nine of Wands, King of Swords, Seven of Swords. Excitement and curiosity. I think this ties in with you guys doing more fun things in your life, even just by yourself. And this could be something new. You know, this is kind of the undertone of like something new with the Page of Wands also and It might just be sporadic little things that you do for yourself that are fun, that make you feel excited, and that could also potentially align you with the types of, you know, partner partners that you would ultimately want. You guys have a lot of swords here in this reading. And so I do think that there are a lot of themes coming up for you with the swords around mental energy, the way you're thinking about love, your mindset around love, but also your communication style with love. Because the Knight of Swords is a talker, okay? This is somebody who just cuts to the chase. And I feel like that's kind of how you guys are coming into this reading. It's like coming into this reading, cutting to the chase about something. <laughs> um, I do feel for pile three that you guys might be a little bit guarded when it comes to love. Like maybe there's a lack of trust in people around you. Um, maybe you guys kind of feel like your options are sort of barren in a sense or that like there's just a lack of being able to fully let your guard down and trust others. And I feel like that's why we have all these swords energies surrounding here. 
because a knight of swords and a king of swords are both more of the intellectual energy of like, again, being more about the head space versus the heart space. So I do feel with the Knight of Swords, there's some sort of decisive action that you guys are choosing to take regarding your love life as you're coming into this reading. And it's fast-paced energy, and I feel that the action is being taken because there's a situation here of not feeling totally comfortable or feeling like you can't trust someone, potentially. Um... I'm also getting a message here, like, I don't know, sometimes I read these in order, but it feels more like all one energy to me, especially these three cards here. I feel like for this group with the King of Swords, there is this energy and the Knight of Swords. I feel like there's this energy of like to protect yourself. Maybe you are like someone that jokes a lot or kind of has like a a witty sort of conversation energy about you. <laughs> um Maybe you like kind of a banter back and forth with somebody, a debate back and forth with somebody for some of you, especially with that Knight of Swords. This is debate energy for me sometimes. And so I feel like this energy does a couple things. I feel like it's like a defense mechanism for some of you, whereas for others of you, I feel like it actually creates this environment where both people don't feel comfortable because it's like you're debating something, you're battling something about beliefs <laughs> that you have or values that you have. And maybe if those things are not fully aligned, um, because of the way that you're talking about it, it is potentially pushing people away. So I think going back to too much, there are certain topics that you don't necessarily need to dive into on like the first date or the second date. Like you can get to them. Uh, but the way you go about it is going to be really important because there are certain types of communication that can draw people to you, but there are also certain types of communication that can really push people away, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind. It's something I'm picking up on for some of you. Um, some of you guys with the Seven of Swords also may be kind of in a place of avoiding love or intentionally kind of distancing yourself from love or partners at this time to protect yourself. The seven of swords is also kind of self-sabotaging energy too, where like we're not really being forthcoming about how we feel about a situation. So we don't talk about it. We just completely act like it doesn't exist. It's also ghosting energy for me as well. So some of you guys could be ghosting someone. Let's see. Let's pull some more cards. I feel like I need more clarification here. So what is next in love for pile three? Give us some more context, please. We have work, profession, college, workplace. So this could be work stuff coming up in the reading too. Maybe people that you're connecting with romantically at work or college. There could be something about your profession as well. That's significant to your dating life. We have gifts, surprise, presents, openings. What I'm getting with this is almost like a Pandora's box energy of like, <laughs> there's something about talking and opening up Pandora's box, which can be good, but it can also be bad depending on what's in the box, you know? So kind of going back to this message of too much, you tell others too much about yourself all at once, sit back and listen more. There could be a need here again to like, let certain things be a surprise, you know? Let's see. This could also be more literal for some of you that like you're getting a gift or a surprise of some sort. Let's see. Something unexpected. We have the courting man. 
Uniform professional male. Hmm. And we do have communicating here, texting, phone calls, online. So there's definitely communication here. I will say the King of Swords or the Knight of Swords could be a specific person that you guys are talking to as well. It could be this professional male energy that's here. Um, air sign energy with all these swords for sure. But I feel like this person, there's something about your beliefs that are maybe like different. <laughs> and... I don't know why, like the, this is like a man in uniform. So someone that would wear a uniform to work. There's a, you guys use your imagination. There's a lot of professions that do that. Military, police, fire. I mean, there's all sorts of things. They're not just those. Um, but then this is also like, could be like a business type of guy too, or person in general. It doesn't necessarily have to be a male because we also have feminine energy here with the work card coming up. Um, and as I'm parting this deck, we do have religious factors coming up, which sometimes indicates there's a difference in belief systems here. Maybe this for this group, it's like you are coming into it. Like I think if you don't resonate with the message of oversharing, maybe you don't feel like you overshare. I think that there is a need here to really be discerning about oversharing with this particular person. Like feel it out. Kind of like get to know them. Let them open up and express themselves, okay? And it's going to allow you to see if this is the type of person that you can express certain parts of yourself to or if they're going to be like too strict. Because the King of Swords can also be someone that's kind of um, militant in their beliefs or really um, like the moral police about certain things or picky about their love interests. So just something to consider. Okay, let's see. We're going to close it out with a few of these cards. So what else should Pile 3 know about their love life and what's next for them? We have wedding. The situation involves marriage. Okay. So this could be a situation that's moving to a higher level of commitment or someone you've, you've met at a wedding. <laughs> Um, you guys could also just be kind of thinking about this topic as you're navigating this. Uh, I also, you know what I'm also getting? I think for some of you, the belief system stuff is about marriage. Like maybe you guys aren't on the same page about marriage or long-term committed relationships or something like that. Let's see. We have separation. Time apart from your partners on the horizon. Yeah, like that's what it is, I think. We have honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. So there's like this undertone of spending time with this person, but then I feel that you might learn that they have a different idea about like marriage and commitment. And this may push you guys to kind of like sneak out of it <laughs> in a sense or leave it behind with the seven of swords because I do see some distance some distancing happening here with the separation card from this person or this energy. So I knew that this was supposed to be for singles, but I still, I feel like whoever came to this pile is like literally already talking to someone because their energy is all up in this reading. So <laughs> anyways, I'm going to close it out there for you, group three. Please comment below. Let me know which aspects of the reading you felt resonate the most with your situation and tell me how your love life's been going. I always love hearing from you guys in the comments. Um, if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I post the next reading and I'll see you then. Bye.